for two, three years. I don't know. It's been a long time. And then it's like we keep missing the Sunday services for this or that or whatever. But um, Michael didn't have to work tonight. And um, let me tell you, from the time I woke up this morning at 7 a.m., oh, what a day has this day been. I would mark it down to be one of the worst days of my life. Um, I went back to work yesterday after my second short-term disability leave, total of 12 months off. I feel like I need to be retrained. Everything's changed. Um, my brain is slow. But the worst of it is um, I have um, uh, I have dim vision. I don't see really well. So I really can't see faces. I mean, unless you get like right up here. So if you want to stick your tongue out at me, cross your eyes, whatever, I'll never know, um, but if you like smile or I can see mo movement. If I see that, then I can see otherwise because I don't want I don't want anybody to ever think I'm rude to you because I'm not. I love everybody and. And um, anyway, this morning I got up and I'm trying to keep it from my employer that I can't see. And that's not working out for me very well. I have great big screen magnifiers on both monitors. And supposedly if you pull them out as far as they go, it, you know, magnifies even higher, but I can't tell. And and I wear glasses, and then Michael bought me a magnifying glass yesterday with a light in it. So even with all that, oh my gosh, I can't see. It was much worse than it was before when I went on my second leave. But um, I can't get in to see my ophthalmologist until September 26th and for an evaluation. And I, I got some numbers for the blind institution. And I've been speaking with them. And they've really encouraged me making me feel like it's not the end of the world, you know? And um, well, today my card, my badge wouldn't work. We have badge readers and you have to be at your desk with your badge plugged in to this bad re badge reader to even be able to log in. And for whatever reason, my card worked fine yesterday. And then today, it wouldn't work. And I couldn't um, log in. I called the help desk, and you know they came in on my screen. And I'm just messing up, trying to log in. My password, getting it wrong over and over. This guy, oh, I could clearly tell he was getting frustrated with me. And you know I tried to tell him, well, how about if I just call you back? You know, he wouldn't let me hang up. but. Anyway, so they had to escalate the ticket, and, and then another guy called, and I had to go in the office today because my card expired and it had to be renewed every three years. Michael was thinking it was HR trying to get rid of me. And um, I was believing him, and um, anyway, it just, just a technical, you know, um, process but anyway I got my card all fixed and got back home in time to clock out from work and um, anyway I I 
tell Michael, I, I can't do this if you can't see the screen, if you can't see it. And, um, and so I, you know, I try to hold that magnifying glass with this hand to be able to see and then navigate the mouse and type in and looking, looking, and it is, it is exhausting to say the least. And um, anyway, I, um, we were quiet on the way to church. I wasn't talking, but I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if I have to give up my job, I'm only six years away to retire. I've been there 18 years. But, but just like the lady at the Blind Institution, Sharon, you know, and she's also like a minister. And um, she was encouraging me about, you know, going blind. And, um, and also ministering to me, you know. And then as we were talking later in the conversation, I found out she's totally blind. I have, I'm limited. I'm, I don't remember what they call it, but, um, but my vision is limited. And, um, and so, I just told the Lord on the way to church, Lord, whatever, whatever your will is, whatever your desire is for my life, um, I know I've dedicated my life to you. I belong to you. I'm your child. And whatever you have for me, Lord, I just need your strength to get through it. And whatever your will is my will, Lord. I'm okay with it. If I if I lose my job, if I go blind. Um but I my ophthalmologist gives me hope because what's wrong with my eyes is for some reason I have this water retention, swelling problem. When I was in the hospital the first year, they, from IV intravenous um, diuretics, I lost 100 pounds in water fluid. And um, <clears throat> I know that because I know how their beds weigh you. And and they told me how much I weighed when I got there. And when I left, they told me how much I weighed. And so um, 100 pounds in water. And, um, and so my ophthalmologist told me that when you retain water, you get this water in your eyes. And it impairs your vision. So that's what the problem is. And I keep keep praying, Lord, he, of course, he, his arm is not too short. He can touch me anywhere, anytime. He could clear my vision up the snap of a finger if he wants to. And so I know he's in control. Whatever it is, his will, I I talk to my Aunt Peggy, she encourages me. And, and he has a job for us. Whatever his will is in my life, I wanna, I wanna do that. I, I wanna stop being a baby, y'all. I'm sorry, I feel like when I come to church, I cry on your shoulders. And I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, but God is so good. He is so good to me, and he's blessed me so much. And, I mean, even though my vision is limited, you know, I, some time back I, I quit 
complaining about what I couldn't do and what's all wrong. And I started thanking him for what I could do. And I thank you, Lord, for all the things I can do. I, I'm, I'm not back in a wheelchair, really. I just had a very long, exhausting day. And, um, and my legs get tired and weak. But anyway, I praise the Lord because I can see getting through my house and I can I can see well enough to be home by myself and and I'm not in total darkness, you know, I can I can see big I can see big things and and I I just want to praise the Lord because I just I know he can, I know he can heal me, and, but whatever he has, I, I'm just counting this, he's getting me ready, he's preparing me, and I want to be prepared, and I always pray, Lord, don't take me, don't take me, please, please don't take me until I'm ready for the best resurrection that I can have. So, so y'all remember that, okay? Because I am. And I don't want, to, I don't want y'all to be taken until you're ready either because I want everybody I love in heaven with me. You know, Brother Smith's been talking a little bit about what heaven will be like, you know? Can you just imagine? No, no sadness. No, no more suffering. No disappointments. Just everything happy, joyful, rejoicing. I just want to rejoice with the Lord. And, you know, I read it in... In the Bible, you know, we're here to earn a crown so we can throw our crown at his feet. And I want to I wanna be there for that. And so many people have passed on, many in this church that I just dearly, dearly loved. And we're just going to reunite in a perfect world, perfect world. No, nothing negative, nothing bad, everything happy. I, that's that's where I want to go to my happy place. And but I praise God, praise Him for making us ready. And that's from the day I stepped in this church. I don't know, twenty five years ago. May maybe 20 Joshua Joshua was about seven anyway from the day I stepped my toe in this church is when when the Lord started working on me preparing me for his will in my life and I want to finish don't y'all, you, you want to finish, you want to get through the full course. I don't want to drop out. I don't want to be a high school dropout. I want to make it, and I want to make that graduation and, and live for all eternity. I don't know if there's any of you who would remember, but we had this church service years and years ago and this man he came up and he preached he's up there on the other side of the pulpit and he had one of those tape measures I know you've seen them they're about the size of a dinner plate <laughs> tape measure that big and he started talking to us about life eternal and he started pulling that tape out and pulling it out, and pulling it out, and pulling it out, and it just draped all over the Bible stand, and down the stairs, and the floor. I mean, that tape measure was just everywhere, 
And he said that our life, our life on this earth is smaller than the two little lines together. That's how little our life is. And he said, life eternal is this tape measure. And on and on and on and on and on. And he said, and then some, any more that you can imagine, any more that you can imagine, all that tape measure. And I remember how that impressed me so much. Of course, 20 years ago, I still remember him up there and all that tape measure everywhere. And still today, I remember, y'all, our life is this big. I'm surrendering. I give it all to you, Lord. I surrender. And, and I'm going to trade those, that little space for all that and then some. And forever and ever and ever, and it never runs out. It never runs out. Forever and ever and on and on and on and on. And y'all have to be there too, because you know, I'll get lonely. And I, you know, and if anybody knows, I can talk to you till four in the morning. And um, I don't know why Blue Cross wouldn't just keep me. I'm such a talker. I mean, you know, but <laughs> but God is so good. Whatever his will is in my life, I told him on the way to church, Lord, I give it all. I give it all up for you. You're so worthy. You are so worthy and so great. And I just can't say enough. I can't magnify him enough he started here and me and the boys lived in a little bitty the house behind the church i called it my little granny house on ascension all oh, little bitty house the floors were like this i mean the hallway floor was so up and down they cut the bottom of the door so you could open the door, you know, but I mean, the rickety little house. But um, I was talking to an old co-worker and I remember when I moved in that house and I thought I made a mistake and I told her I wasn't gonna unpack. I got to move back home and, and she got on to me and she said, if I don't unpack those boxes and put stuff away and make it my home, I'm not giving it a chance. And I told her last night, I said, you know, Robin, I'm so glad you said that to me because when the boys and I lived in that little house, that was the best time. I loved living there. God blessed us. We lived right behind the church. We could run back and forth. The boys could come back and forth. And we were so blessed to be here in this church and right behind and you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and I know God set that up so we could be established here. And we made first gospel our home, and um, and and I've been so thankful and blessed to be a a part of this church ever since. Me and my boys, and. Miracle after miracle after miracle. Oh my gosh, God has blessed my life so much. So much, I tell him, regardless, Lord, I cannot complain. You have always filled my cup to overflowing. You have blessed my life. You have touched my life. You've touched my heart and written your word on my heart and made me belong to you. I'm so thankful today that I serve and worship and know the living God. And he knows me. He knows me and he knows right where I'm at. 
and I want to be right where he wants me to be regardless. I love and bless him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Forever and ever, always, eternally grateful to you and your goodness to me and, and my life. And y'all know I love you all, too. So good to be here. So good to be here. You know, she's have so many problems, but we look at some things uh, when she's having bad days. We try to look at the points of uh, it helps her overcome this or it helps her overcome that or perfection. Uh, we try to pull out things of what she said to uh, what can we get out of the, the problems or the deals that can uh, do us good uh, sometimes that we it's, it's sort of hard to find but we always do somewhere we do uh, the the visual problem it's uh, super hard but uh, we look at it then we have a spiritual vision uh, so we try to be a positive thing we learned that from brother Wanniger looking positive look at something for positive being positive somewhere you always find something good if you look you, might, you will find something good. Somewhere, you will find something good. I don't care. You'll have something naturally that is bad. Her job, it's got negative things, but she still has a job. She still has something. She still has uh, good things somewhere in a bad situation. And so do I. We're still working with it. That's the good part. It's called teamwork. So... Somewhere down the road, we're going to uh, supersede, and it comes apart with uh, uh, we work together, and sometimes we rub shoulders, but then we have to sit back and take five. Then we put the harness back on. We have uh, teamwork together, and we're doing pretty good as in uh, what we have. We do fairly well because it's uh, what needs to be done. Uh, she has uh, working on the issue of perfection. She's always been a uh, perfectionist as in natural. But, uh, as in this, I said, well, here comes your time to come to perfection. And I teased her on that tremendously. I said, you was a perfectionist before you married me. Now comes time to be real uh, coming to perfection. So, uh, and I really do that. I says, now, now you got another one to uh, get per perfection in. So, and, and oh, yeah, patience. <laughs> and a tribulation work with patience. You depend on other people for about everything. Yeah. You have to be there patient and just be happy right. about it. Right. So, so we, we have to work with it and she does tremendous and we it has done real good I mean some people says it uh, a, a bad situation and then also comes the the deal with uh, a healing that has come up on us and uh, I've seen uh, people be healing here comes faith we, we we with the problem we talk about that we can sit there in the living room and we'll talk about how come the Lord hasn't healed me? Well, have we seen uh, people healed lately? Uh, how good is our faith in that? Uh, how much faith? I mean, different things on that uh, that we have in the body or in in the Bible. How many people has been healed? How many people have we seen that's been uh, physically healed and got up and put the crutches down or got out of the wheelchair? Here comes another subject. So we got to uh, do a little more encouraging ourselves to depend on uh, healing. So. Depends on how you want to look at it. Uh, I'd maybe do a little more studying on things like this for us. Uh, so it makes us uh, more studious. It makes us uh, more praying. So that's one thing that I have learned more on that one. So it depends on how you look at it. If uh, Some people want to get the grumps and uh, be negative on something like this. And it does get uh, rubby uh, sometimes, uh, quite a bit in fact. But here comes the point of, uh, you got to turn around, look at the other side, and uh, 
and it does work. We've got to do more work on faith. We've got to do more on uh, taking it right, and, and it as, actually does work for, uh, for faith of knowing that the Lord will do something for her and I. So uh, as long as it does, we look at it up that way, that's going to be good because I know the Lord uh, can and will. I've seen people, well, my grandfather, he was healed with a broke back. So I know he can heal my wife. I know that. I've seen people, other ones, but someone in my family was done that way. I know the Lord can do that to her. So uh, when it comes to faith, uh, I have that. Uh, but I, I want to do more praying, and that puts me in that category of having more faith in the Lord. Yeah, so I have to push myself and put it into her where we have more faith, more prayer. Uh, so it depends on which way you want to look at it. How do you want to look at it? Uh, so I want to be more positive and be look at it. So uh, we do uh, appreciate your prayers. Really, we honestly do. Uh, and I'll make you, uh, I'll let you know that we honestly uh, appreciate you when you do. And thank you so much. The Lord, the Lord actually gave me a song. And, um, but I didn't bring my magnifying glass. I can't read it. Um, but I, I'll, I'll tell you what he gave me Sunday, okay? listening to them that's that's part of my body you know that's um there's a care there there's a concern um I, brother mike i believe was here when i came and sister julie when she came i remember her and the boys coming in it's family and um i thought uh the lord has blessed me um and i've been kind of waiting for maybe the time to tell it and a uh, and I think it's now, and um, we have a huge um, job going right now in the shop, a huge job. But before that happened, I started having a health issue, and because of my mom and dad's family history, it's an issue, you know. It was like, but I, what was the blessing about it was I felt like, Several Sundays ago, the Lord blessed me really good, and I knew when he blessed me, I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, this. there's a big test coming, and we're still in the middle of it, but but he blessed me, and it just really touched me, and uh, I had to go in for some testing. I couldn't, this event, this thing that's going right now, started on the 2nd, and I couldn't get in for the test until the 11th so you know here my workload's going like crazy and I'm trying just to keep my mind focused and so um, staying staying on task of my job and everything and literally um, the day that I went in for my test and I really didn't stress about it or worry about it really didn't lose any sleep over it but I just knew because of my family history this could be an issue a huge issue and I'm not a person that sits, you know, so I'm already thinking the process is, okay, if this happens, I'm coming back, <laughs> you know. And But the day I had to go in for my testing, the Lord sent Cody by to see me. And it was just the perfect little lift that I need. I wasn't down. I wasn't depressed. But it was just that perfect little lift that I needed that day just so I could just walk out the door because I was right after lunch and and went in and got it you know went in and done my test and everything and but also what kept coming to my mind sister Julie and brother Mike when y'all were talking was that through this my, my wait period to go in for my medical test 
I just kept hearing the Lord say, in my, you know, just trust the process. Just trust the process, you know. It's like don't focus on what could be or anything, but just, just trust. Just go one, one day at a time, one step at a time. And so I went in, and um, I remember uh, a couple of years ago when I had to go through this again, back then, I went into this uh, facility, and there was a gentleman outside, and he could feel how nervous I was. But this, you know, and I mean, I'll just, I mean, my mom and dad both had different types of cancer, you know. And so, but this time, you know, the Lord just gave me Cody, and that was just just, just enough. And I went in, and by the time, I guess about 3 o'clock that afternoon, I had I had my results and everything was benign. And I was just like, I was just like, thank you, Lord. Just thank you. He does heal. There, but there's a process. It's a learning process. And I knew it wasn't just a, a process for me as far as the medical part, but it was him just at night. I could just lay down and just, I had your will, Lord. And I could go right on to sleep, you know. Several years ago, I'd been anxiety. I'd been, I'd been a nervous wreck by the time I walked through the door. But just, just trust the process is what I just kept hearing the Lord say. And I just I felt like I was just waiting for the right time. And I think it's tonight. So I just appreciate, I just appreciate that my brother and sister are here tonight. This song came to my mind when Sister Crafton was talking. Um, I do not by any means have to go through the physical trials that you are going through, but I know when my, our bodies fail us, when we feel like they're failing us, our, our mind is what takes the toll overall. And um, just your desire to um, want to continue with Christ, that's ultimately all all that we're here for is no matter what we go through is to um, is to walk with him and, and to reach that final destination. And so this uh, song just came to my came to my heart. <clears throat>
walk by your side. Lord, create within me a place where you would dwell with a heart 
might say, <coughs> might say a few words here tonight. Won't be long, but um, appreciate what we feel, the spirit of the Lord that we feel, and I appreciate the words that we've heard. And uh, I just I was reminded of a passage in the Bible, a couple of passages, but so I'll start uh, just briefly in Second Peter, the first chapter in the fifth verse. He said, besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. And of course, you can go through that. Knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience, patience, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, and then charity. And of course, we know that charity is, is the completion. It's the bond of perfectness. Um, it's, it's our desire, our goal, our objective to have the love of God shed abroad in our heart that we can love like he does and um, I was thinking here tonight as different ones were talking the songs that have been sung uh, the 24th chapter of Luke came to my mind and I wanted to share a little bit with you this passage here of course is talking about um, the day after the the Lord had been crucified, and um, the the disciples were really sad about it. I mean, as you can imagine, the man that they had followed for three and a half years, their savior, their redeemer, their leader, their hero, um, everything that they had forsaken, their, they had forsaken their houses, their homes. They had given up their jobs. They had surrendered everything to follow the Lord, and now he's gone. And um, they return to the sepulcher, and you can read about that in verse 9. Um, from the sepulcher, and they, they, they realized that the, uh, the, they had, let me, I, let me just start at the beginning. I, I don't mean to go long, but. In the first verse of Luke 24, it said, The first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And, you know, that had to be just gut-wrenching to them. They, they had grieved. They had gone through, you know, uh, a space of several hours there where they, they weren't, near him and they had reconciled in their mind that he was dead and now they wanted to bring closure um, to this man that they admired and loved and and uh, he was gone and so they were perplexed in the fourth verse behold two men stood by them in in shining garments and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Naturally, that should have been a clue to them. But, you know, when you're in a, when you're in a bad uh, way or you feel like your situation is, is hopeless or, or desperate or frustrating, um, you don't always recognize, you know, the good, as Brother Crafton was saying. And so sometimes you have to look for it. You've got to position your mind in a way that you can find the good in, in a bad situation. And so uh, he says, why seek ye the living among the dead? And uh, he is not here, but is risen, verse 6. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And I was thinking about that today, or tonight in our service, and how important it is for testimonies. How important it is for us to remind each other that God is on the throne, that he knows our circumstances, he knows where we are, and there's not anything that he can't handle or deal with. And... Um, we could, if we took the time here tonight, 
we could bring testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony about our experiences and the experiences that people have told us about of God's delivering power. Praise God. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful uh, thing that the Lord has done for us to give us a method, a means of worship, a place to come to to hear the good Word of God, to hear the testimony of deliverance, and to have our faith uh, built up in the Lord and built up in His power, His redeeming power. I thank God for the church. I thank God that we have a place to come to and, and get lifted up, praise God, and receive the good words of life. And just like these ladies here, they, they remembered His words. And they returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven. I think in Matthew it recounts that they returned with joy. Um, they told the eleven and all the rest, and it was Mary Magdalene and Jonah and Mary the mother of Jesus and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed as idle tales, and they believed them not. Oh, here we go again. You know, it, it's like a roller coaster sometimes when you're dealing with unbelief. When, when we're dealing with our lack of faith, and that's why I read that Scripture there in first in Second Peter, the first chapter, he said, add to your faith virtue. Strength. Let's believe. Uh, let's not just believe, but let's believe it with, with strength. Let's, let's make it so. Let's have confidence. And then he said, add to virtue knowledge. And here these uh, ladies, they remembered, they had knowledge of his words. They remembered what he said to them. The disciples didn't, they, it said as, here, it said that they seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. And then Peter arose and ran down unto the sepulcher. Stooping down, he beheld the linen cloths laid by themselves and departed wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And this here is what kind of stirred my mind. The 13th verse it said, Behold, the two of them that went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score, score four furlongs. And they talked together all these things which had happened. They began to talk about it. That's why it's important to let the Word of God to let the testimonies of God's people become a part of your conversation, a part of your regular conversation. Saints of God, we can, we can get our heads uh, low, we can get down in the molly grubs, talking about all the things, the, and, and I'm just as guilty, Brother Fisher, to not make it a wonderful Wednesday, to, to just, man, this has been a hard day, and I can tell you all about my hard day, and and not take the time to tell you about the goodness of the Lord, to share a good word uh, of the Lord. And I was thinking, um, just even as the band song kicked off tonight with that song, Alleluia, it just, it's there to help us rise above, to help us rise above the, the, just the cares of life and the deceitfulness of riches and the frustrations that go with just our day to day. Thank God, I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord today. I'm, I'm going to tell you today that the, you're probably still going to have some of the same problems that you walked in here with. But I want you to know that you can you can feel the Lord tonight. You can know that the, that you're a child of the Most High God and that He's got your world in the palm of His hand. Hallelujah. And so the 14th verse, it said they talked together of these things which had happened, and it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Doesn't it feel that way sometimes? And Sister Crafton, I thought about you. It's, you know, the, that, that glare, that gloss over your eyes. The disciples here, their eyes, they, they couldn't see. They couldn't see that the Lord was walking right beside them. There was too many other things clouding their vision. There was too many other things in their life that were preventing them to see that the Lord was walking right beside them, that He was there 
to, to be with them and comfort them. And he asked them in the 17th verse, he said, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And so here's the thing. You know, Jesus, he's not naive. He knows. He knows when we're sad. He knows when there's sorrow in our heart. He knows when we're disappointed or doing without. That's not a mystery to Him. Saints, we're not hiding anything from Him. He knows the very thoughts and intents of our heart. There's nothing hid from Him. In fact, if you would, get up close to Him. Because He's right there with you. He's not hiding from you. He's not, he's not uh, as Sister Crafton said, His arm's not short. His eyes aren't, you know, His ear isn't, isn't uh, his eyes aren't dim and his ear isn't heavy. He knows exactly what you're going through. And he said, look, what manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, he's answering and said unto him, art thou only a stranger? He's like, do you not know what's going on? Are you a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And Jesus, playing coy, I suppose, he said, what things? Why are you so sad? Why are you so sad? He, you know, he's, he said, what things? And, he, and they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. Verse 20, and how that the chief priests and our rulers delivered him in to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had, we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, to the, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher, when they found not his body. And they came saying that we have seen a vision of the angels and he is alive. And so the whole situation was confusing to them because they had forgotten what he said. Saints of God, it's not unusual. It's not strange. It's not, we're not, uh, we're not out of the ordinary. It's normal for people to forget. And so I'll, that song sometimes we sing, roll back the curtains, a memory now and then, remind me where you brought me from. And where I could have been. I, I was reminded of that, Sister Crafton. When you were worshiping tonight, I could tell that there was such a peace in your heart and such a, a, a joy for you to be here. And it just it touched me deeply. And here, he, Jesus, he's, he, he said, how, how can you not remember these things? You know, in His world... Why are you so sad, is what he was saying. And he said, then he said unto them, in the 25th verse, he said, O fools and slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. Now notice this right here. And I, this was really, it just became more evident to me how important it is to read the word of God, to listen to each other's testimonies, to take these songs and make them a part of our day. Saints of God, if you're not singing a song, I encourage you to. Try to find a song to sing through the day. Something that, that reminds you of the goodness of the Lord. Something that helps lift you up. Something that helps you deal with the frustrations or the trials and the tests. People lean on all kinds of things in this world. They lean on all kinds of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, remedies or, or uh, addictions or, you know, uh, physical dependencies. I want to lean on the Lord. I want to lean on the Lord. I want His Word. I want His Spirit to be a part of me so I can lean on Him. Jesus told His disciples, He said, that he said I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you a comforter and that comforter will lead and guide you into all truth. And bring to remembrance the things that you've been taught. Knowledge is so important. 
it, the knowledge of the Word of God, knowledge of your testimony, knowledge of our, uh, of our heritage, knowledge of this church, knowledge of the body of Christ is so important because it will establish you in your going. Hallelujah. I've seen so many people, they lose their knowledge. The Bible says that they look into the, into the mirror, they look and they forget where they came from. They forget what manner of person that they were. I don't want to be that way. I want to remember. I want to be reminded. I want to remember where I came from. I want to remember what God brought me to. And I want to remember what I'm striving for. And so here in the 27th verse said, In beginning at Moses, wouldn't you have liked to got in on that message? He said, at the beginning of Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, and whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone farther, but they restrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And so I'm going to fast forward here. Uh, they begin to understand that he was the Lord, and uh, they begin to under realize that uh, in the 33rd verse, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem, found the eleven gathered together and them that were with him, saying, The Lord is indeed risen. The, the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they, and they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And they thus spoke, Jesus stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened because they thought they'd seen a spirit because he was dead. They, they, if the Lord walked in today, I think we would probably all quiver a little bit. Maybe a lot. Uh, it would probably make us, you know, Sister Crafton, I respect what you said. Don't take me until I'm ready. <laughs> you know, don't, and that's really, Sister Weininger, she would read that poem about the potters, the potter and the clay. You know, and and. You'd have to go right back into that fire one more time to, until, you know, you could strike a note and there, nothing would crack. It was, it, was, it was solid. It was ready. It was finished. And uh, he, he says here, he said, why are you troubled in the 38th verse? Why do your thoughts arise in your heart? See, again, I remind you, there's, it's, it's not uncommon for us to be troubled it's not uncommon for us to be uh, intimidated by the circumstances around us. Jesus, he said, Behold my hands and my feet, and that it is myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye, have, as ye see me have. And so he was just illustrating to them that he was real. Well, you've come too late to tell me that the Lord's not real. I know what He did for me. I know what God did for me. I know how He, he called me from a little kid to salvation. I know that whenever I was a young teenager, He, he planted the seed, the Word of, not, of God in my heart to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I know that He gave me the Holy Ghost. There's, it's undeniable in my heart. I know that he, he turned my life completely around and changed me and delivered me from circumstances that would have sent me down a terrible path. You've come too late to tell me that God's not real. I know that He's real. I don't need to see His body. I don't need to touch His hands or His feet. But I want you to know, I met the body of Christ. I found out what His hands are. I found out what His feet are, His arms are. I found... I found this, and it became even more important and more real to me than seeing a natural man and touching his hands and touching his feet. Thank God this is so much bigger and greater than anything I ever imagined in my life, anything I ever dreamed about, anything I ever learned about out in Babylon. Praise God when I found the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And so he began to eat with them. He began to expound upon uh, the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms. He said, he began to tell them in the 44th verse, he said, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all these things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets in the Psalms concerning me. 
Then opened he their understanding. Whew. Wouldn't you like that tonight? Wouldn't you like to go away from here tonight with your understanding open? That God gives you peace, gives you knowledge, gives you understanding about your circumstance, about whatever is troubling you, about whatever is rising up in your heart. Wouldn't you like to have a, an understanding, a peace that passes all understanding tonight? Hallelujah. I would. I'd like to be able to reach up and say, Lord, I'm yours. I'm yours, Lord. Use me as you will. These circumstances are too big for me, but they're not anything small. They're, they're just small potatoes, if you will, in your hands. I'd like to be able to just say, Lord, I'm trusting you through it all, through the thick, through the thin. I'm holding on to Jesus. Praise God. My faith and my knowledge is keeping me in your care. Hallelujah. He said, he said he, then he opened their understanding. The 46th verse, thus it is written, and thus it, it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You could just feel there's a building right here. Jesus began to talk about these things to the disciples, and you can just feel a building. There was a message. There was a calling began to build up in their life when they began to hear Jesus say, Look, look, y'all. We're going to talk about repentance. We're going to talk about remission of sin. We're going to preach this in His name among all the nations beginning right here in our home. He began, you can just feel that there was an escalation of importance, of significance about the message of Jesus Christ and what it would do for that time and those people in that day. Hallelujah. There's coming a day, saints of God, when the Word of God is going to rise up in our hearts and they'll say, Have you known the Lord? And we'll say, we know the Lord. Do you know the Lord? We'll, we'll be communicating with our friends, with our neighbors, with our, uh, the people in the grocery store, our co-workers. There'll be a, a, a joy, a, 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 an inspiration that'll just rise up and we'll begin to talk about the, re the repentance of Jesus, uh, the repentance of man, the remission of sins, the preaching in His name among the nations beginning right here in Little Rock. Hallelujah. He said, and ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promises of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. That's why we come out here. That's why we gather. It, that, you know, we, we, we struggle sometimes. We work long days. We have, you know, we have to, to deal with the cares of life, uh, if you will. But we're, we're looking to be endued with power from on high. And notice, I want to remind you, in the, I think it was the 13th verse, that when he came upon them, uh, or in the 17th verse, he said, why are you sad? But, but you follow down, he spent a little bit of time with them, began to tell them about the goodness of God, and he, he said he led them out as far as Bethany in the 50th, 50th verse, and he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And it came to pass that while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They started out with sadness, but they didn't end that way. Hallelujah. The knowledge of the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the presence of Jesus in their life, the testimony of Jesus began to change that sadness into joy. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love this way. So they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. I just came here to praise you. I, you, I just wanted you to know I'll not mention my needs. You've been so good to me. I just came here to praise you. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise, praise God. Let's give him a praise before we go home. I appreciated those words and I appreciated everything that was said tonight. And it was a special blessing to have Brother and Sister Crafton here with us. We've been really missing them, and so I'm glad they're here. I know uh, 
of course, we've got several. We got as many out as we got here, or more probably. But, but, uh, but I feel God in this place, and of course, part of it's COVID. Some we've got several that are, you know, out of town and different things. But it'll just take us a while to get back in the groove, and everybody get back, you know, to being faithful. On Wednesday nights, that used to just be a regular night for everybody, didn't it? But, you know, with, with the, the COVID, it's just going to take us a little while. But I thank God that we've, you know, we've about to come through, it seemed like to me. This, hopefully that the, the, the strains of COVID are just getting more, are less and less, I should say, uh, serious as far as sickness is concerned, so... It seems like it, uh, you know, I'm, we still have to kind of watch and see what God, uh, you know, part of it I'm sure has to do with natural things, but I also feel fairly certain that God was in it and uh, that the Lord had a purpose, not only for the world, but for, um, uh, for the body of Christ. I was talking to uh, a minister today. He called me on the phone and we were talking. I said, you know, it wouldn't have been too long ago that you couldn't have, it had been very hard for you to see Armageddon very far down the road or very close. It's not that hard to see today when you start watching what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. I don't think there's fixing to be a, uh, nuclear war, because I don't think God's prophecies are, shows that there, there's time for that. But you can see the possibility of it. It's, you know, you get a few madmen, a few men that, you know, like uh, Putin. Putin, he's if he's truly sick and he and he may be down in the end of his life, he may, he may be, you know, a man like that could do something that foolish, that. Erratic, erratic. And, and so you can see where you never would think it would be possible uh, how uh, we know the Bible talks about the battle of Armageddon and a destructive, how destructive it's going to be. And so we've always looked at it, it'd probably be something nuclear, but I think it's, I think it's still down the road. We've got to have a restored church yet. And... Uh, you know, I was telling my wife today, we were talking about the Lord, and and um, I, I don't remember exactly what she was saying, but I said, let me tell you about perfection. I said, you'll never reach perfection striving for it. Not, you know, it's okay to strive to obey God and to serve Him, and that's what we're to strive for, is to please God and where we're at in in our walk with Him. Like that song we're singing, Lord, fill me with Your Spirit. Uh, you know, the, the, the prophet John the Baptist was filled with the, the Spirit of God. Not He wasn't born to the Holy Ghost, but he was filled with God's Spirit from his mother's womb. He, you know, there were different prophets that God, God uh, uh, had the... The uh, it was his uh, authority. He had the will. He had the right to use anybody any way he wanted to. And some people, you know, I was thinking about uh, wasn't it Zacharias that was uh, that uh, do, he worked in the temple? Um, no, what was his name? I was, I was that was John the Baptist's dad. Uh, Dad, before he was born, wasn't it? But the one that uh, said I wanted, I, he wanted to see the Lord before uh, Simeon. That's him, Simeon. He, he, God had showed him that he would see the Lord before he departed this life. And then Anna, she, she was a, a prophetess. She was a, a sister that that uh, God uh, let her behold Christ before she died. God used different people he in specific ways and uh, you know so I, I was just telling my wife I said 
God's the one that is going to have to take us through whatever we've got to go through. What we've got to do is we've got to serve Him to the best of our ability and, and be dedicated to God and strive to do the will of God and then enjoy your walk with God and let Him finish the work in you. That's His job. That's not your job. It's not my job. I can't just decide that I'm, I'm fixing to, you know, I see the race and the end of this race is, is perfection. But God's going to have to give me strength to run where I'm running in the race and He's going to have to take me. I don't know exactly when I'm going to reach the goal. I'm still not, I don't see the goal line yet. And so I'm trusting God to take me that far. But I'm like Sister Crafton. It, whenever he takes me, I want him to take me in the best place that he sees is best for me. That's what I want from the Lord. And so, uh, you know, I do believe that we're living in a time where God's He's making up overcomers to be a part of the man-child group that will rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. So we have that vision and uh, we're trusting God to help us uh, to fulfill what vision He's gave us. We wouldn't have that vision. You know, they won't be preaching that down through the thousand years. They won't be talking about making the overcoming group, but they're going to be talking about they're going to be talking about what Sister Crafton was talking about. This heaven that God is going to come down Himself and dwell among us. God the Father. I just can't, you know, I'm wanting to see Jesus, but I know He wants me to know His Father. I think He wants me to know His Father more than He wants me to know Him. If that's possible, I think He wants me to know Him. But I know everything Jesus had to say pointed towards His Father. He knew that was the source of righteousness. That was the source of life eternal. And so I'm thankful tonight that, that, uh, that for the vision that we have and the calling that we have and the blessings of God and, you know, whatever He takes us through. I was thinking that song when Sister Crafton was talking. Uh, There's a song that said, It will be worth it all. Heaven uh, for me will be worth it all. There's a song that says that. Heaven for me will be worth it all. Uh, that includes me knowing and having a relationship with Jesus Christ and the Father. And that's, that part right there is almost beyond my comprehension. That the, the, this eternal God, <laughs> this I can I can understand Jesus. He was a man. Even though he was created by God and in heaven, he was a man on earth. So I know he related to us and I can relate to him. It's, it's somewhat as him being a human and experiencing what this life has to experience. But I can't fathom the Father. I can't fathom Someone that has no beginning <laughs> and no end. I, that's beyond my comprehension. That, that, that leaves my, the, it's, it's infinite. And, and it's beyond my thinking, what I can conjure up in my mind. And then the fact that he created all of this. I know he used Jesus to do it, but he, he's, the one that, he's the one that did it. it he was the power. He was the source. Uh, Jesus was just the word and done what his father said to do, but for him to have, as Brother Painter was reading tonight, you know, it's just, it was, those are wonderful things. Uh, I was telling Brother Durham, you know, when he was reading about, you know, there's, there's several women there, not, not just Mary, the mother of James, not just um, Johanna, Joanna, Johanna, but there, it said several other women that were with them. You know, God loves women. Women have been faithful uh, in, into the things of God and the Lord, 
has always ushered them into his kingdom and had a place for them. And, uh, and, and, and they, they're the ones, it wasn't the disciples that run to the, to the sepulcher, it was them women. Them women went to the sepulcher. They, they said, we, we want to at least, you know, uh, prepare him. We want to at least uh, see him in his, in his finality. They couldn't go before because it was a Sabbath. But then when they, they found out he was gone and that he was risen, the disciples thought they were nuts for a little bit there. You know, Peter's the one that jumped up and took off and run to the sepulcher. But then those men that had walked to Emmaus said about three score furlongs. Uh, a score in the Bible is 60. I mean 20. And three score is 60. And so a furlong is about uh, 600 feet. So that was 36,000 feet. Divide that by a mile, 5,280 feet. It's 6.82, almost seven miles that those men walked. That would have took a couple of hours probably. He walked with them. He, he met them somewhere along the way. <laughs> and, you know, they didn't hardly realize who was there, but then it an amazing, I appreciated Brother Painter bringing that out, that he, he, he met up with them when they was all discussing all this. He actually called them fools. <laughs> yeah, that they 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 weren't comprehending. You know, that's what I was saying about Jesus. That somehow, when when he was in heaven, he had a clear mind and a celestial makeup that understood the whole purpose of God, and he functioned as God's son. In all of creation, you know, I, I, you know, I, I was thinking the other day, how did he wind up? How did he get it when he told them that your your angel beholds a father, the face of the father, every day? How, how where did he get that? You know, he he understood enough about God. I know he understood it when he was in heaven, but he came here as a little bitty baby. He couldn't even talk when he was born. He just cries all he could do till you stuck a bottle or in, you know, till he got some milk. <laughs> but somehow God dealt with him in such a way that he came to an understanding of the riches and the greatness of God and even who he was. And of course, I know the angels ministered to him God spoke to him audibly a few times. We don't know what all happened that we don't know happened. He still, you know, how many of y'all, how many touches have y'all had from God? And how many times have you wondered, is God real? <laughs> how many times have he had to remind yourself of them touches and the things that God's done to manifest itself to you that you just can't let go of. And you know, like Brother Painter, you know, he said, you come too late to tell me he got, God don't even real. <laughs> well, that's, we, we all have to have that. Those men, Jesus appeared to them and, and manifested himself to them. And to him... He, he, was so, he was so far ahead of those guys. They, of course, they didn't even have the Holy Ghost yet. But he just couldn't hardly fathom how they couldn't... You fools, you don't believe the things that you've been taught and read and what the prophets said. You know, he just it's hard for him to fathom that they weren't getting it. Well, that takes you back to have God's hand being on you for a special way like it was on Jesus, like it was on Moses, like it was on Elisha and Elijah. Yet he did that for those purpose, those people, that it would reach you and I, that it would touch you and I, that we would get enough witnesses, that there would be enough touch from God, that, that you know, there's just so many things that's happened to me in my walk with God that I'm just... I'm beyond convinced of the truth of this God in heaven, this one God and Father who is 
above all. <laughs> My Lord. And to think that someday I'm gonna, he's going to dwell and I'm going to know him as his child. So have some kind of relationship with him. How many, how many can he have relationships with? He's, he can have a universe of all kinds of uh, planets that are doing something that's all working for him in some way to make all this possible. And then to think he's big enough and yet small enough to find time for some little guy like me. <laughs> Woo! My Lord, we're, 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 we're blessed that he's included me. Hallelujah. Well, let's all give him a praise. Let's, uh, why don't we stand and give the Lord a praise before we go home. Uh, remember this week in your prayers, keep praying for Sister Durham, Sister Smith. She, Sister Smith had a good day today. She, she really did. And, and her foot is really, it is healed. We had, she had a doctor's appointment today and her, her foot is really coming along real well, healing and she's even walking with a walker uh, from, you know, the couch to the kitchen. She's just kind of shuffling along, you know. She can get on her little scooter and be there just pretty quick. But <laughs> she's got one of them little scooters that she puts her knee on and, and she holds the handlebars of it and then she make it go with her other foot, kind of like riding a skateboard. Only this, this this skateboard's bigger. It's got four wheels. It's got handlebars, and, and uh, but she <laughs> she's she went down to the kennel on it today, and you know it's downhill that road, and uh, but it's got it's got brakes. I told her I said you hold your hand on that brake. <laughs> Sister Gail walked with her uh, down there, and Sister Gail said, "But pull on that brake. You're going too fast." <laughs> I think she was enjoying that, you know. But anyway, she had a good day. So I know she's thankful for your prayers. And she's telling me today she's pretty wore out and her leg was, and her foot was, it kind of swells up in the evening a little bit because she's not used to using it. But she said, I, I want to go to church Sunday. She said, I hope I can, I hope everything works out where I can go. So anyway, remember them. My little niece, 49 years old with pancreatic cancer, died last Friday night. And so Bonnie Garza, and, uh, but I think her life is going to touch her family. I'm praying for my brother, Fred. I'm wanting him to be touched that he can get back to God. He and I got the Holy Ghost the same day. We were just little kids in LaPorte, Texas. I, I think I was 10 or 11, and he was, he's a year older than me. Uh, naturally, we're twins spiritually. We both got the Holy Ghost the same same day. Matter of fact, I'm, I come out first. <laughs> I'm claiming to be the eldest in the spirit. <laughs> I just now come up with that. I never thought of it before right now. But anyway, uh, I am praying for my brother. The last time I saw my dad, he was in the hospital and he hugged me, kissed me right in the mouth. I couldn't believe it because for my dad to even hug you, is, is a special deal. And, uh, you know, he'd come from that old school where men were tough. And they, anyway, he grabbed me, kissed me, and he, he'd tell me, he said, son, promise me that you'll try to reach your brother, you know, that we'll hope that your brother can get back to the Lord while he's still in this life. So, uh, so I'm praying. I saw God touch him. I hadn't had too many times and his life that I've been able to reach out to him and I've never forgot dad's words and and uh, so anyway I'm praying for him in this and I'm, I, I know that this has touched him he can't hardly imagine why she's went through this with such a good sweet spirit and then she got the Holy Ghost on her on her in the hospital bed just like a month ago maybe maybe I, I don't think it's even more than a month ago when she was praying, she didn't have the Holy Ghost, but she had really been praying, talking to God, and feeling God. And, and she got in a closet. She didn't know she was in the hospital or the bed or where she is at. She got in a closet with God when she come to herself. She was laying in 
a hospital bed speaking in tongues. And so I, I've got great hopes for her and that her life will touch others. And, uh, you know, I don't know the purpose, how God figures everything. My wife and I were talking today about how it seems like to her and I that you have to get at a place in age before you come to a place of coming to certain realizations about life. And, you know, it just seems, you know, it seems like that either that or we're, or she and I are, have been so dumb that we're just now smartening up a little bit. <laughs> I think most older people, Brother, brother McGowan, I think most people, older people think that way, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, let me just say this. You're serving a great God. And he'll see you through. He'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. you. People can leave him, but he won't never leave his child. He'll never leave you. He, you know, he, he's always there. You know, uh, Gabriel. How, how, I'm, I mean, I guess Gabriel's, ever since Jesus created the angels, I guess that's how old he is. Because it was he was like, 500 years or so before Jesus when he talked to Daniel and then he was the one that talked to Mary <laughs> and uh, you know so and he told Daniel he said look I know I, I, it wasn't that we didn't hear your prayer I've just been busy you know I, I had some other things I had to do and what you needed wasn't so important that I needed to leave that but I finally got the time to get here here I am we haven't forgot you <laughs> he was um, he, he, Daniel was special to the Lord had a special reason calling him for what he called him for and so God used an angel I've told the Lord I said I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to claim to be special but I'd sure like to have I'd like to, I'd like to talk to Gabriel if, it, if you ever have if he's ever got time for me <laughs> I'd like to just you know See him maybe once and have him say something to me. It wouldn't have to be anything profound. Wouldn't you like to say, Gabriel talked to me? <laughs> you got to talk to Daniel? He come to see me. <laughs> I know that sounds far out. Y'all think this guy's kind of getting off his rocker, but <clears throat> I, <laughs> I just believe that, you know, I'm not. It's not that I expect that or think that I'm somebody that need that that God needs to to do that for. But I'm not going to put it past Him. I'm not going to say it's not. If God wants to, I'm open for it. <laughs> praise God. Let's praise Him tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for Your goodness, Your great grace. Oh, Father, help us, Lord, to know You more. Like this song we sang. Oh, God, let us get close to you by your Spirit. Oh, God, lead us and guide us. Oh, God, we're your children. We need you. We need your leading. We need your touch. Oh, Lamb of God, those that are in this city that have ever been touched by this message, God, some way, somehow, help us. Heal us. Oh, God, touch us. Somehow unite us in, the, in your blessed spirit. Change us, oh God, that your, your purpose, your great grace, your will would go forth in this town. Oh God, help us, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. We give you praise. Amen, amen. All right, God bless you. Did y'all know that Bridget had a birthday this week? How old are you, Bridget? Eight years old. Woo! That's, you know, eight is a number of a new day. Yeah. When a, when, a, when, a, when a Hebrew turned eight, that was, you know, a Hebrew boy, when he turned eight, that even eight days was a, was, was a, a special time. So eight, it's a number of, of new. You finish up in seven, now you're starting something new. So... 
won't be long. She'll be twice that big. We'll wonder how she got there. <laughs> Happy birthday. God bless you all. Shake hands and be friendly.